Oh, hello. Welcome to our exterior tour of our Ford Transit Connect. Today we're going to be talking about our fan, our roof rails, our cargo rack, and our touring awning. Hope you enjoy. So this is our Max Fan Deluxe. It is a 10 speed, 12 volt, 5 amp fan. We decided to go with this particular model mainly for two features. The first feature is the ability for this fan to be open and working while it's raining. So while this is in the open position, there is no chance that any kind of residual rainwater will get inside the van and keeps it dry. A lot of the smaller and cheaper fans don't really have this option. The fan just kind of swings open so you can't use it while it's raining. To us this didn't seem to make sense as when it's raining it's usually also muggy and humid so that doesn't seem like an ideal situation to not be able to use the fan. The other feature that we really like is the fact that it is both exhaust as well as intake. We wanted to be able to both bring air into the van as well as push air out. Living in tight quarters, the last thing you want is to have like a stinky stinky fan or um, just kind of musty. So that airflow both in and out is great. We also noticed that even when it's colder, we'll put it as an exhaust. So we're not bringing cold air in, but we're still kind of keeping some sort of airflow and it doesn't get too cold in the van. So that is a, it's a great option. Some of the models that they have, they don't have an exhaust. Any of the more expensive models, really the only features that they offer is pretty much a remote control. Whereas our fan, all the control switches are on the underside. So we do have to physically, you know, press buttons on the fan. There's about five buttons in there on off button as well as a plus and minus toggle which controls the 10 speed fan which also comes in handy if you want a more aggressive wind speed that also takes more wattage or if you just kind of want a little breeze which again takes less watts we had to buy 14 gauge wire this fan comes with about seemed like two feet maybe of wire but as you can see we position the fan at the back so we did have to buy wire to run down the side of the van and then at the front side where the cooler is we went underneath the floorboard and that attaches to our goal zero. We mostly run the fan at night, so the two options we had were to hook it up to the car battery or to the goal zero. Since the car is off, we didn't want to risk draining the battery, so we went with hooking it straight up to the goal zero. This really doesn't use a lot of wattage, so we have no issue at all with battery drainage. We run this for, you know, eight, nine hours a night, no problem. So I would recommend, if you can, is hook it up to a second battery source rather than your vehicle because when you sleep, your car is probably not on. All right, so here we have the 14 gauge wire that we have running down the side of the van under the floorboard. The fan comes with power connectors with a protective plastic casing. We found it hard to get two of these into the 12 volt connectors that the Goal Zero had. So we made an adjustment and we cut the plastic off. But it really works for us since these aren't always plugged in. Sometimes they're in, sometimes they're out. Here you can see the 12 volt panel for the 12 volt fan. Let's just slide into there. And when you engage the source, the fan is now powered and ready to be used. Our fan was our first big project on the van. We decided we wanted the fan as far back as we could possibly make it. It perfectly sits and rests just on our rear brake light. I think it looks aesthetically pleasing. It ended up, unbeknownst to us, that that would actually really help us out because it allowed us to get a larger cargo rack. The one thing that you do have to consider is when this is raised up, you want to make sure that there's nothing impeding. And as you can see, it barely clears the cargo rack. Again, that was a little bit of, of luck. We're really happy with where we positioned our fan. When you're installing, you're gonna be cutting a 14 by 14 inch square. We used just a basic jigsaw. It was actually really simple. We were considering hiring someone to do it, but then we watched enough videos and it's really simple. It's kind of a weird feeling to cut into your van, but as long as you square everything up and your measurements are accurate and make sure you buy a metal blade, very simple. It took about 10 minutes to cut. The other thing is you have to seal the sides up to make sure that there's, there's no rainwater that comes through. The benefit of doing the fan first was we were able to ensure that there was no leaking. We absolutely knew that this was completely sealed because we had this for a few months before we hit the road. We do carry some extra sealant on us just for some reason. If it does start leaking, you can have that on hand, but very simple process. It's more intimidating than you think. And it was a really satisfying first project for us and kind of gave us confidence. So that is our Max Air Fan. Max fan.
We decided to go with a rhino rack system for our roof rails. There's a few choices and options. We wanted the square aluminum. They work really well for us and the system that we set up. These roof rails have a maximum capacity of 220 pounds evenly distributed. So if for some reason you're planning on carrying a load larger than that, maybe research something else. This works for us. We don't carry anything close to 220 pounds on top of our, our roof. We went with the square system due to the fact that we were going to be installing the ARB awning on the other side. This is our Rolla VTEX cargo basket. The weight of the cargo basket alone is 40 pounds and it has a cargo capacity of 130 pounds. That keeps us way under the uh, limit of 220 pounds for the rails. We really like the size of the cargo basket. We don't carry anything of too much value up here, so we didn't find it necessary to spend three times the amount for a lockable closed basket for the roof. Cargo carrier, I don't know what those, what are the closed ones called? So we went with the roof basket, which is a cheaper option. I think the biggest downside is currently we don't lock it up. It's just covered with a tarp and a cargo bungee cord, but we've had no issues. We just keep inexpensive things up there, backpacks, skateboard, things like that. And so far it's worked perfectly. For full transparency, we probably maxed out the allowable spacing. As you can see, the front one isn't sitting right in the middle of these brackets. The instructions state that these threads should be about a half inch. It was a challenge to get those a half inch down. So I really had to get physical and it took a lot of effort to make sure that that was secure. We've had no issues driving this for five months. But what I went ahead and did is I added some heavy duty zip ties, two zip ties connecting the cargo basket to the rails. So you can see here, there are some heavy duty zip ties. Just in case if this failed, like I said, I really had to use a lot of energy to get that clamped on. It wasn't a perfect fit, but we made it work. And so far so good. But just for transparency, if you're gonna go ahead and do the Rolo with the Rhino roof rack on this kind of vehicle, expect a little bit of challenge, but I got it on there. Maybe had to violate a few of the requirements of the cargo rack, but. No issues, it's been great. So this is our awning system. We went with an ARB Touring. This is model 1250, which I believe is the smallest model. 1250 is four feet. I believe they have maybe a six foot and an eight foot width. The smallest one worked for this size van. When you're buying this brand, or probably any brand of awnings, they're not gonna tell you how to mount it. So we had to get kind of creative. You can buy mounting brackets from ARB. You can mount this directly to your van if you wanted to. You can mount this to the back of your van. There's a lot of options and a lot of flexibility. So if you're sitting there Googling how to install an ARB awning, it's not probably gonna be fruitful. And if you do find it, chances are it's not even probably gonna be the same model car as yours. When we were searching for how to install the ARB awning, we started to realize that there wasn't a one size fits all approach. You, you have to get kind of creative. We knew that these Rhino Rack roof bars were gonna be the way we were gonna mount this. We don't have any space to mount it directly to the car. We didn't want to do any damage to the actual frame of the car. So I'm gonna try to quickly explain to you our creative process of installing the awning to the Rhino Rack. Forgive me if it seems a little confusing, we'll do our best. We used two five inch by five inch L brackets. So picture the bottom is five inches, top is five inches. So we cut off about three inches. So what you're seeing is five inch L bracket going into the Rhino Rack and two inches attaching to the back side of the awning. We got very creative with that. We randomly went down to a metal shop. Laura went in there and the guy who did us a favor and cut those for us. Cause these heavy duty brackets are probably gonna take us close to 45 minutes just to cut that tiny amount. The shop owner did it for us in two minutes. Big thanks to, to that. But again, just get creative. So then what we did here is we cut two holes straight through the bottom of this aluminum rhino rack bolted it to the bottom and secured it that way. And then in the back, you can see we use the bolts provided and those just mount straight onto the ARB awning. These L brackets were really the puzzle piece that we needed. They perfectly slide. The width matches the width of the Rhino rack and it's, a, it's very secure. I know it's a little bit confusing, but again, when you're looking at an ARB awning, you kind of have to get a little creative and specialized on deciding how you're gonna mount it. So yeah, I guess I'll just move on to pulling this awning out. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to attempt to set this awning up with one person, which is doable. It's not the easiest way to do it, but 
uh, it's possible. So you're just going to go ahead and unzip. Lift it up. Velcro, two Velcro straps. So make sure your hand is on the awning. You don't want to get hit in the face. So the first thing you're going to want to do is pull these two bars and extend them all the way. Next, you're going to unravel the actual canvas awning. You'll see two more legs. Extend these. Walk back this way as best you can. Once you have your awning stood up like this, take the Velcro straps and just hook them on to the bars. Like so. So I'm like 6'3 and I can stand um, under the bottom of this. If it's windy, you're gonna wanna use these guy wires which just secure into the ground. The awning comes with four stakes. We have a hammer. It's probably not ideal for windy days to have it set up on concrete. This will blow over pretty easily with uh, any kind of gust of wind. We love it. We use it pretty much to eat under, mostly on long boondocking trips. So I'm gonna try to demonstrate now putting it back in by myself. And we'll keep it as genuine as possible. So the first thing you wanna do is take the straps off. Uh, next, take the sidebars out. Get them out of the way. Next, you're going to want to fold the legs back in. So once you tighten them, fold them into themselves. These guy wires we just leave on. You don't have to, but we do. All right, so they suggest not rolling this up if it's wet. So if it's wet, maybe let it dry for a bit. It is canvas, so it can mold. So now we're just rolling, trying to keep it as centered as possible. Next, grab these sides. Okay, so once you have that, Take these straps, secure the awning back in. It's not the easiest thing, but it's very doable. It zips right back up and you're good to go. So that is the exterior tour of our van. Uh, if you're interested in any of the products, we'll go ahead and put the links down below. We appreciate all the comments and the feedback that we've been getting. If there's anything that we didn't cover, please let us know. Thanks again.